So today we're going to be focusing on the construction side of several of these tools. And what we really want to go over is not so much the picks and clicks, but looking at how these new features and how the new coordination uh, abilities of these programs are really going to help out the industry with regards to the construction side of things. So we'll be looking at a handful of different programs. So something like Vault, how that actually can work with coordinating and organizing all your software. We'll be looking at things like Navisworks with some of their new features for quantity takeoffs. But the focus is going to be on the construction side and on the how this is going to make people more profitable, how it's going to help with coordination, and how it's just essentially going to help the industry with moving forward and being better. So first thing we're going to look at is Vault Pro 2015. So if you're going to look at this from the standpoint of an actual project. So first thing we got to do is figure out how we're going to manage this project. How are we going to organize this? How are we going to actually coordinate with all the other people that are on this project? Because nobody works on an island, especially today. So some of the things that they've actually done to this tool has improved the data standardization. So if you're working on a very large project or even on a small one, you don't want to have to look for files in 15 different locations. You also don't want to look for files that are named 13, 12, you know, however many different ways. So this allows you to template different things if you want. It also allows you to drive the compliance for project requirements. <coughs> now how it does this with a few things are Revit integration. So you can actually manage your files by uploading them to Vault, saving them there. Vault can actually see some of the properties now. They can map different things. You can actually pull files into the Revit project from Vault, which is definitely beneficial if you're trying to coordinate a couple of different offices worth of content or trying to save your sheets and share those around. So a lot of little things there, but they've added more features to this. Now, part of Vault that's great is its ability to share and coordinate amongst multiple locations. The thing is, those multiple locations, they tend to be within one office. Part of the Vault Pro gives you Buzzsaw. So whatever you have locally, you can actually share outside of your office with Buzzsaw. Now you have complete control over this. You can manage the, pro the, uh, the access rights for however many people you want. And you can actually access this. If you notice on the slide here, we're looking at it through a web browser. You also have access to this on the mobile device as well. So just by having them on your own vault within your own network, I can automate the process of sharing files out. And in the same uh, breath, I can actually share that with the programs that I'm working with. So if you have somebody who is off-site, consultant that works with you on a project, you've given them access to your Buzzsaw site. So they actually can open up and then save files back directly to Buzzsaw. Now the nice thing about that is your Buzzsaw site is synced with your vault. So it can automatically be uploading your work to the bus saw as well as downloading other people's work to your vault. So that way your backgrounds are always up to date and the files you want to get to other people are always up to date. And this actually does work with Revit as well. So you've always been able to export the DWFs as well as DWGs to bus saw. You can now save files like the actual RVTs there as well. So once we've got everything organized, we figured out how we're going to share our files, we've set things up. Now we have to figure out, well, what are we actually doing with our project? Now, some of you may have noticed that there's a program called Recap. If you're on one of the design suites, this actually is something you already have. And it's one of those great tools that has a lot of little features in it, but it's very easily overlooked. Recap is a program that is designed to help manage and view large cloud uh, uh, point clouds. So if you're normally working in a point cloud, sometimes it can get really heavy, really hard to manipulate and manage. Now, one of the great things about this tool is it allows you to coordinate and organize things the way that you want. So on the slide that you're looking at right now, what you're actually able to see is that you're highlighting all of the elements in that cloud that have been assigned as equipment. So if you're working on a project, maybe you could care less about the equipment. You want to know where the walls are, the ceiling height is, and where the floor is to line everything up. So, okay, I turn that off. I can hide it. I can delete it. You notice that there's actually notes in there. Place poster here with an actual website in it. There's dimensions for what the floor to the ceiling is and also from the edge of that table to the wall. You can mark this up. You can save content on it. And you can actually save this out and then bring it directly into some of the other applications we're going to look at. And you can also share this with people who don't have Recap by uploading this to Recap 360. 
So one of the benefits of this is the ability to actually view the point clouds online. All you have to do is log on with a browser, nothing else. And then from there, you can actually work on it. Now, the other really cool ability, and this is one of those things that's kind of new for a lot of people, is the ability to create 3D models based off of our point clouds, or, or sorry, based off of our photography. So what we're actually looking at right now is a 3D model that was created based on photographs. You can kind of see all of those photos on the left-hand side. Those were taken from a little RC helicopter. So you put a little camera on one of those things, you either fly it around the site, you have it be automated, however you want to do that. You can also do this on the ground and inside of a building as well. But this is taking those photographs and building a 3D model. So think about that. You go out to the site, you spend about 20 minutes doing this, you upload it to the cloud, come back in a couple of hours, and you have a 3D model to work with. So that kind of shaves off a little bit of time there for a lot of people. Now, the other benefit of ReCap is that the technology behind it, the ReCap engine, is being built into a lot of the other applications. And we'll talk about that, and I'll actually show some of that in a little bit. So things like the ability to snap to that point cloud in AutoCAD and actually be able to do clash detection now against the point cloud in, 20, in Navisworks. <coughs> so moving forward, another tool called InfraWorks. So InfraWorks tends to be considered as an infrastructure tool. The thing is, though, if you look at what it actually does, it's not just for infrastructure. You can use it for a lot of different things, whether it's construction for presentations, whether it's for working with those point clouds that we just looked at, uh, aggregating different buildings on the site to look at them and analyze them, simulate things, or just put things together as presentation values. So this is just a slide showing InfraWorks with a point cloud in it, and the different colors are actually showing you the elevations. And one of the benefits of that is on the other side slide here, we're actually looking at the reality, the point cloud scan of the bridge matched up with the 3D design of it. So we're looking at this from a standpoint of how close is the as-built to the intended design. And you can animate things, you can make very, very high level resolution, uh, uh, high, high quality uh, presentation images. You can set things up for web-based browsing. And one of the really neat features is the ability to use this as an augmented reality tool. So I think walking through the site, walking through construction, and you're looking through the screen and seeing what doesn't exist there or maybe is hidden because it, the model understands what needs to go there or what actually is built there. And that could also, again, be point cloud data. So we're utilizing the tools for what they can give us and what they can actually benefit in the construction cycle. So we move on to Revit. Now, it's not necessarily a construction tool here or a construction uh, feature, but the ability to do hidden lines in a view of just everything that's hidden is definitely something that's gonna be useful. So if you're trying to look in something or explain something, you can now see beyond objects without having to grab a whole bunch of things or do a lot of work. So if you're trying to take a look at what's above the ceiling or behind a wall, it just makes it a lot faster. Now, for those of you who are working with people who maybe aren't using Revit or those people don't feel comfortable sharing their Revit file, there's IFC linking. So IFC being sort of like a neutral file format for BIM data, this allows me to link to that file. It speeds the process up. It enhances the ability of using the uh, what intelligence is still in the file. And it also makes life a lot easier when you receive updates. So enhancing the ability to collaborate. Now, for those of you who are actually doing rebar, Revit, part of the structural updates, now has the ability to do reinforcement numbering. It'll help out for your annotations for your shops. You can actually sequence things a lot better. And in terms of your shops, we can actually present these rebar sets a lot cleaner. Makes it a lot more understandable as opposed to what's going where and how you're laying this out. So they're trying to make things a lot better, not just for the design side, but also for the constructability and the shop drawing sets. And if you're actually doing as-built or you want to have very high level of details for maybe the detailing software, maybe you're building your detailing sets right off of the model. Now we have a lot more control over how these pieces of steel are actually placed. Now, <coughs> moving on to AutoCAD, a lot of people still use it and has a lot of great little features in it. And one of the new ones that are in there is the design feed. So the enhanced design feed, you can see on this image here, has a little photo in it. 
one of the things that you can actually do here is you can work in a drawing that you're currently drawing, modifying, whatever, and you can actually call out areas. Whether you put a push pin in, you draw a circle around it and say, I need something on here. Maybe there's somebody in the field who's using, using Autodesk 360. You can put a mark on it and say, hey, I need a photo of the existing conditions around this site. Somebody can go out there, take the photo and upload it. And they don't have to be in your office. They could be working for another company, but they're assigned to this project so that way they can actually sync and see the design feed for that project. So I can ask questions, I can talk to other people, I can send images, I can call out areas for attention. All of that from directly inside of AutoCAD. I don't need to be bouncing out and sending emails that might get lost or deleted by accident or you know, hidden when somebody gets 300 emails in one day because they've been out of the office all day. So make sure it stays where it's needed and it's easy to work with. In addition to that, we have some recap tools. So we have the upgraded uh, uh, reality capture integration. The old tools that were in there have been completely redone. So now we can actually crop better. We can manage the way that the, uh, the point clouds are displayed. Sometimes when you have a point cloud taken, normally what it does is it looks with the red, green, blue value. It looks like a photograph. But if it's very dark, it's hard to understand what's going on. In cases like this, you can actually change the way that that image is shown, and it actually will read a lot easier to understand. <coughs> Again, hopping over to Navisworks. Again, more recap stuff in here. We can do the clash subsets, so we can actually look at where things are happening. We can convert that point cloud a couple of different ways. So how did we want to bring it in? We can set the point size, so maybe we don't need a whole lot of points. It makes things a little bit slower or it's more data than you need. And also once it's actually in there, you can still combine it. So that way when you save your Navisworks file or send it to somebody else, it will still contain all that point cloud data. Now, stepping a little bit away from the point cloud information, we're talking about quantification enhancements. So a couple of years ago, Autodesk took some of the features from Quantity Takeoff or QTO into Navisworks. So, but it is mostly featured around the 3D side. So what they've actually done now is they've integrated a lot of 2D takeoffs inside of Navisworks. So if what you want to do is literally just draw the box, draw the shapes, you can still have all those uh, typical 2D scale or 2D style takeoff tools. You can draw whatever you need and get the information that way and still combine that with all the 3D takeoffs. So you're not limited to just one or the other, you can still work with both. Now, moving from there, <coughs> these next two things are not necessarily a 2015 feature, but they are definitely a part of the construction workflow. So you have Autodesk BIM 360 Glue. Now, the reason why I say it's not part of the 2015s is that because it's part of Autodesk's cloud offerings, it's not relegated to a once a year upgrade cycle. It's not like, okay, well, this is a 2015 model. Maybe you'll get one or two new features or updates, but it is what it is. The cloud-based tools, and you can usually tell them because they have a 360 in their name, those are going to be updated uh, much more often. So right now, BIM 360 Glue, which you're looking at here in terms of a, just a markup and a viewing. We can also set up our clash reports. Everybody on the team that I've given access to this site will be able to view these and check things out, put comments in, mark up, upload files, download files, and coordinate. We also have BIM 360 Field. Both of these applications tend to see updates once a month. So if there's things that people need in them, they're able to move around and be much more agile in terms of these updates. Now, we're gonna move over to the demonstration side. We're actually gonna hop into some of these software. But what I wanna point out again is that I didn't cover all of the updates to those tools. There's a lot of different updates. Some might be important to you, some might be important to somebody else. What we did was we cherry picked and focused on several of the ones that we feel are very important to the workflow for the construction side of things. So what I want to do right now though is hop over to some tools. So what I'm going to do is hop over to recap first. <coughs> so what you're looking at right now is actually a point cloud of a workspace. If you see these little circles here, that's actually the photograph, so that cylindrical view that the actual uh, scanner will take. So if I wanted to look at things in more of a photo based view, I can do that there. What I'm also able to do is put markups and comments. So you can see there's some dimensions here, comments there. I can also turn things on or off, and you can see I have different scan regions. So there's that equipment one that we were talking about before. I can turn this on or off. 
So now I can focus on the pieces of information that I actually care about. And once I've gotten this all dialed in, I have a couple of different things I can do. I can save this up to the cloud. So maybe somebody who doesn't have Autodesk software, I need them to look at this and mark something up. Maybe I have a guy out in the field that, you know, in their trailer, they just have an old computer that can get email. Okay, well, they can get online, they can look at this and actually see what's going on and get information back to me. Or I can just save this file out and then bring it into Revit, Navisworks, AutoCAD, based on the way I've modified it. And as far as going back and forth, I can move between different scans very quickly. And the scan that I was looking at was a regular point cloud scan. The scan I'm looking at right now, this huge site, this is a scan based on photogrammetry, meaning that photographs were uploaded. I made, or sorry, I didn't make it. Autodesk 360 made a 3D model for it, and you're actually able to download this and still interact with it the same as you would with any other kind of point cloud. I can select parts of this. I can turn them on or off. I can delete elements that are outside of my purview or things that I don't care about. I can put dimensions on it and quantify and get data from it. Now, speaking of the cloud, you have Autodesk's Revit 360, sorry, Recap 360. I can come over here and start new projects, open projects. I can open up samples. So this file right here is the exact same one that we were just looking at. This is the scan data that has been shared to the cloud from the desktop recap. So anybody can come in here. They can find out distances. They can leave notes just from a browser. This is the point cloud that I'm looking at right now. And if what I need to do is take some photographs and actually build a model, I can do this. And this is a fully 3D element here that I can actually use, download, and bring into other programs and work with. And you can see where some of the other photos are taken from. So that little gray box with the blue lines coming from it, that's actually where that photo is from. So if you're working on large sites and you need to get a quick model to work from, if you do historic preservation, works great for that too. So let's say you have statues that you need to protect, you have statues that you need to create others of. I can very quickly, and I mean quickly, I took this in about five minutes, all the photos. Uploaded this online. About three hours later, I get told that my model's ready. So how long do you think it would really take for someone to get you a model or to get information to somebody who's actually going to be building this? Maybe give them a quote to work from. All of this is digital. All of this is online. And the actual one that I would download from the website is going to be three times more detailed than this one. <coughs> so moving on from the recap side, I'm going to hop over to Revit now. So let's say we've got our point cloud, we're working in the program now, and it's time for me to actually get some work done. One of the great features about this is I can easily bring in a point cloud, and I can actually manage this as a link, and then I can literally trace this. I can snap to these edges and work on things. I can manage how much of the point cloud I see, because it is technically a 3D object. So I can crop my view where I need to, ha where I need to start it or stop it, so I'm not seeing too much or I'm not seeing too little. This actually works with all my sections. So if I were to actually cut a quick section through here. Yeah, clean that up a bit. There we go. So now I have a point cloud that's actually able to be used for setting up my ceiling heights, understanding where my door heights are. This makes it very quick for me to actually start working off of. I didn't have to go and take my scan and then make an AutoCAD file and then trace the AutoCAD file. I brought the scan directly into Revit and started working on this. And depending on how I need to work on things, I can either look at it like this, color, or if I have certain areas that are just a little hard to read, maybe what I'll end up doing is telling this to change the colors. That maybe certain things are a little bit easier to read when I set it up for intensity or for you know, the elevations. Just depends on what I need to view this as. 
And because this is actually a link to recap, if I'm looking at this and I realize that, you know what? I really don't need any of this information that's outside of this one view. I can clean this back up and recap. I can get rid of all that extraneous information and then I'm only working on the parts that I need. And that's one of the really big benefits. If anybody here has actually worked on a project with uh, point clouds, one point cloud by itself could be a couple of gigs and trying to work on that on a floor plan could really be cumbersome. One of the benefits of the new workflow between these two and the ability to literally just link the point clouds is that I can have as many point clouds as I need. So I can actually just come over to here and I can have different point clouds linked in for different reasons. And that way I'm only loading the ones that I want when I need to work on them. So it keeps my file size down low and it doesn't have a whole lot of data that I might not care about. <coughs> okay, so let's say we've been working in Revit for a little while. We've got our model built. Now I wanna send somebody and I need to actually make sure that things are working. Or let's make sure, or let's say that I only worked on one part of the project. In this case, I'm going to Navisworks. And what I'm looking at here is really, really simple Navisworks file. Not a whole lot going on in all honesty. What there is is a point cloud file. So this is that point cloud file that we were just looking at actually. And then a really basic MEP file. So essentially this. You've got one duct, two pipes. Not a whole lot. But what this shows is that if I look through here, I can actually see that you know what, this doesn't look too bad, but I can tell that my pipes are running through there. Again, really simple project. It's easy to see this just graphically looking, but you don't always have that benefit. So what I can actually do is take this, go to my clash report, tell it I want to run a clash between my point cloud and my MEP side, and I can actually get my results. I can see that this is literally running through what would be the studs or the beams in the point cloud. Now, this is beneficial for a couple of reasons. Number one, you're probably not always going to have a physical model for everything that you wanna work with. Especially when you're working with existing conditions. If I'm trying to take a building and I wanna see how maybe the footings will sit, I can actually clash that against the actual topography site that I've got. And that might be a laser scan or a point cloud as well. If I'm trying to see where the as-built is from a scan, relative to the actual design model, same thing. And what we're looking at now for certain things is with existing MEP rooms or mechanical rooms. I wanna actually see where everything is on that and I can bring the scan of that room in and look at what the design intent for new mechanical systems are gonna be. Do I have room? Does everything actually fit? And is there even room to go in there and do that work? So these tools, while very simple, are gonna be very powerful. So just a quick recap. A lot of the stuff that we looked at, not a whole lot of picks and clicks, more so talking about what the benefits are gonna be. And a lot of the things we talked about were point clouds and scans with recap and how recap is tied into a lot of these programs. Now, the reason why we focused on that a lot is that reality capture, the price is coming down on that. So it's not like there's a $60,000 cost of entry for anybody. Also, Autodesk is working with Leica right now where you can actually rent a scanner and the software for a month for a very, very cheap price. And if you decide to want to keep it, the price that you rented can actually be applied towards the purchase. So the realization is that a lot of problems come in projects by not understanding where you're really building. Whether it's a building, whether it's infrastructure, whatever it is, you can get everybody on the project coordinated with each other, but if they're not coordinated with the site or the situation that they're gonna be installing into, there's still gonna be issues. And the benefit of this is that you can be out in the site, do a quick scan, and now that information is useful. You know exactly what the actual spatial relationships are gonna be that you're getting into. You can tell people what their clearances are very quickly. You don't have to constantly send somebody out into the field because, oh, when I measured it, I didn't get that number. If you took a scan, all of it's in the computer or in the cloud, and then you can very quickly grab that information. And add to that and all the other features that kind of tie into that, whether it's for quantification, sharing files, ensuring things are consistent. Everything ties in with the idea and the goal that we're gonna make coordination better, profitability better, and with the way things are looking for 2015, there's a lot of work coming out, things are really picking up, 
and we feel that this software and these new features will really benefit and add into that.